And welcome back to your region of 120. I'm Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina that I think that you should know. And today we're going to be talking about uh, one of the ways that you can, uh, I guess, fail to reason correctly. It's kind of a logical fallacy, although it's related to a whole bunch of other logical fallacies, so it may not even be kind of one of the, the default ones, depending on what list you're looking at. Um, and it is begging the question. Uh, so this is going to be related to a couple of the videos we've already done already, specifically video 24, i.e. circular reasoning. Um, we kind of went into how circular reasoning works in general. We're going to go into a specific couple of examples here. Um, related uh, also is video number 23, Ignoratio Elenchi, again if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, which is again uh, going to be kind of somewhat related uh, because you're going to be uh, talking about something that isn't uh, uh, directly related to the argument in question, although in this case the thing that's being talked about is, is the, uh, the other, what you're trying to prove basically, uh, but we'll go into that in a bit. Uh, the uh, video 16 as well is uh, definitely relevant, uh, video 16 is the uh, video on presuppositions, uh, and in this case uh, we are specifically talking about, or, going to, or the, the, the thing we are, are trying to get across is that it is begging the question to presuppose what you want to prove. Uh, that is a concise way of saying it. Uh, but in general, it is, it is going to be uh, uh, structuring your argument so that there is a circular uh, reasoning in effect, uh, but where specifically what you're concluding is being assumed. So this uh, particular uh, lo logical fallacy or, or, or problem in reasoning goes at least as far back as Aristotle, I would suggest it probably goes even further to the sophists uh, who were doing stuff like this all the time, even prior to Aristotle. Uh, and so this is kind of an old uh, mistake that people make all the time. Uh, but it's important to make note that when in, in modern English uh, spoken language, it, it, it's often, uh, or, or, or to, to beg the question, is often used in a separate way than we're going to be talking about. Uh, so whether or not you want to accept that as a valid way of you know, speaking, I will set aside for the purpose of this video. I'm sure a lot of people will have a problem with you if you do uh, use it in a, a colloquial uh, sense. Uh, but uh, if you say this begs the question uh, and you mean that this raises the question or this dodges the question, then that's not worth what we're talking about here. We're specifically uh, uh, referring to begging the question in the sense of uh, assuming what it is that you want to prove, uh, employing circular reasoning uh, in a specific way. So, how is this going to look in practice? So there's going to be a, a couple uh, forms of this argument. Uh, there, there is no one form because, as we'll see in a moment, uh, you, you can build very complex uh, questions that you beg. Uh, but they all have the same property here. So the first one, and, and probably the most basic, uh, is we're going to actually have two separate arguments. Or, or two separate uh, sets of premises and conclusions that are given together uh, and the, the reason why they're given together is because the, the first one employs this kind of conditional logic. So if P then Q, P therefore Q. Okay, that on its own isn't actually invalid. It is a valid way to argue. We talked about it in, in the last video about uh, denying the uh, antecedent. So as you can see, if P then Q, P therefore Q, it is actually formally valid. But the reason why this second argument will be tagged on is that where does this P come from? Uh, so this P is defined by, or, or, or given, or, or stated to be true based on the second argument. And so we, we, the reason that you would do this is if the, the reader or the person you're trying to convince doesn't actually believe P yet, or, or at least there's some reason to believe that they don't believe P. And then, so you give them the second argument, 
if q then p, q therefore p. The problem is that this q is the same in, the both, in both cases. And so you're basically assuming what it is you need to be true in order to prove what you want to assume. You're going in a circle. You're, you're, you're trying to, to get across something that, uh, again, is defined by your attempt at doing so. So let's try to draw a picture of how this is going to work. So you need P in order to prove Q. And you need Q in order to prove P. This is kind of a quandary. You're, you're in trouble here because you have no proof of either of them unless you have already proved both of them. So if you've already proved both of them, you might be able to get away with something like this, but know that the argument itself is not going to be a valid one if you have to convince someone who doesn't already believe. Now, more complicated versions of this might include a third term, or a third thing that you have to assume uh, in order to prove uh, basically itself. Uh, again, and, and you can keep stacking these, you can get um, kind of a, a, a br you know, branches going, so you have to kind of prove multiple things to get the thing you want to assume to be true in order to prove what you started with. Etc. You, you can get more and more complicated, but at its root, you're, you're just going back to this kind of loop that you're, you're defining in the argument where you're not actually proving anything, you're just assuming it to be true, and then trying to pass that off as an argument. So you'll, you'll get into situations where P implies Q, implies P, implies Q, which is fine, but again, you, you haven't proven anything, you haven't shown anything to be true beyond your own assumptions. So you, 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 you've introduced assumptions and you haven't gotten rid of them. What are some examples where this happens? Uh, and unfortunately, this is very common. Uh, there are literally billions of people who follow religions that are founded upon this logic right here. Uh, the explicit kind of argument will go something along the lines of, you know, this God thing must exist. How do you know? Because the Bible said so. Well, why should I believe the Bible? Because God said so. Again, we, we, and how do we know that it was him who wrote it? Well, he said so. And how do I know that I can trust that? Well, he said so. You know, it, it just goes around and around and around. And you, you're always at the point where you're assuming what it is you need to be true in order for what you want to be true to be the case. And unfortunately, it isn't just religion. If this was just a mere matter of looking at organized religion or, or even unorganized religion and finding, okay, well, everything's built on the assumption that what they think is true, uh, that would be you know, bad enough. But unfortunately, it, it's even worse because you can often enough find this even in arguments that have nothing to do with religion. Uh, and so you, you, can, you can get into the, the nature of consciousness. And so you know, if DNA is a molecule that's complex enough and it stores information, and then two, uh, all things that store or all codes are created by a conscious mind in order to communicate, uh, and that there's no natural process known to create codes uh, with coded information, therefore DNA was designed by a mind. Well, again, we're, we're, we're kind of going in a circle here because we're assuming that the codes are only created by a conscious mind. Um, so, what, what, and, and something that comes out in that particular example is that these situations will come up if you haven't really nailed down the definitions of the terms that you're actually using. And so, in that case, there may be an argument to be made that DNA is designed by mind, and that is the mind of evolution itself, and that you could you could define the term mind in such a way that you could actually even get away with you know, believing it, even though it would be very hard to convince someone of that. Uh, and so you're basically in employing arguments like this, convincing people to accept your argument of what words mean. Uh, and so look at the dictionary. The dictionary is defined entirely in, in terms of these kind of circular arguments. Uh, and so when you look up a word, it's going to be defined in terms of other words. Now, of course, on some level, you're 
you know, anything you say is going to be defined in terms of the meaning of the words you use. And so a dictionary has a particularly difficult problem because it's trying to define the terms that you're going to use to define terms. So you know, the, the, the s it's, it's easy to get into this trap, even if you're not intending to do so, when you're dealing with self-referential self topics. Uh, in the case of the dictionary, uh, it may be a little bit harmless if you're just using the words uh, you know, that are defined by each other, uh, as long as everybody know, ev everyone is accepts the definition. But as soon as somebody doesn't accept one of the definitions, or as soon as somebody doesn't accept one of the premises of your argument, the whole thing falls apart. What are some other examples of this? You know, Batman is great because he has awesome gadgets. His awesome gadgets are great because he's Batman. Therefore, Batman is great. Well, again, you're, you're kind of assuming that he's great and that he's going to have these awesome gadgets because he's great. And yet, you're, 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 you're great because he has the awesome gadgets, which are, you know, he has because he's great. So, you know, it, it's just going in circles. And th this is exactly where you, you're going to be stuck and mired uh, if you don't see this as it's happening in the arguments that you're making. Uh, you're, you won't be able to convince people of what you want them to believe, you won't be able to convince people of what you want them to do, uh, and, l and vice versa. They're not going to be able to convince you, even if it's of great importance of something that you should be doing, if their arguments uh, are circular uh, and you don't actually convince them of that. So, uh, in, in short, uh, this is something that you can avoid. Uh, we, can, we can kind of, like the previous video, the examples of this are kind of a dime a dozen. So if you're interested in more examples, feel free to ask anywhere where this video is posted. And uh, do we have any questions from the audience today? No? Okay. Well, uh, hopefully this going in circles uh, has been entertaining, and uh, I guess we will see you at the next video. See you then.